السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اللہ لک الحمد کما انت اہلہ صلی علی محمد کما انت اہلہ صلی علی محمد کما انت اہلہ وفعل بنا ما انت اہلہ فانك انت اہل التقوى واهل المغفرہ اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات اللهم صل على محمد كما تحب وترضى له My Allah is very merciful on his people and shows his unlimited mercy on them His mercy is so great for his servant that they are never left disappointed. His mercy is delivered in different forms. Mankind struggles with his intellect, wisdom, intuition and realization. Mankind doesn't even realize and our Lord has already gifted him through his mercy. If we have the opinion of our Lord as being a tormentor, I seek refuge in Allah, or being cruel, I seek refuge in Allah. On one hand, if we look to our Allah with mercy, in return He will also look at us with His attention, through His mercy and bounty. In other words, how we will present ourselves is in return how we will be treated. tradition hadith narrates to bear in mind my mercy compassion consideration grace and bounty in other words allah says how you present yourself to me is how you will be treated <clears throat> in our every moment we should have the conception of our lord's mercy and he grants with firmness pay attention to these words carefully and consolidate without reason It's not my right, but he always says, take it anyway. Mankind says, I don't deserve this. I don't have any characteristic tools within me. But in return, Allah says, you've been granted it anyway. The bowl in which a dog drinks milk out of and eats from, the milkman wouldn't even contemplate by putting the bowl into his milk. Even if he was offered vast amounts of money, And if a person's heart condition is worse than a dog's bowl, but he still has the trace of belief in his heart, then he will still be showered with Allah's blessings. Where Quran rates, regardless of our blessings to mankind, he is still displeased with and he's distanced himself so much that he has become worse than an animal. Always remember, steps in life are not forcefully taken. They are taken willingly. If today you've all arrived at this Tasbihana, then remember this isn't your miracle. And whatever I am preaching is not my miracle. This is all happening from the unseen. We come to realize that our Lord is merciful as he has given us the ability to remember him. A sin committed by the tribe of Bani Israel, the sin was hunting on Saturday. Allah commanded the tribe not to hunt on a Saturday. In return, they violated the command purposely. Our Lord commanded them to be turned into apes. <clears throat> I've also read in so many scriptures that in between Mecca and Medina, there is a road where apes arrive from a valley named Faria. These are the same apes mentioned. Certain scriptures mention that these were the same apes that died after 40 days. In some it mentioned they died after three days. They violated only one of Allah's commands, whereas we violate many command, commands but are still saved by Allah's mercy along with our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are in between two worlds of mercy and they are our saviour. Allah cannot be cruel, he is very merciful. On the basis of our small deeds we are forgiven. <coughs> There was a pious old man who donated all his life in the service of Quran, Hadith and the Prophet's way of life and delivered Allah's message to mankind. Years later, the old man passed away and came in someone's dream. 
the person having the dream asked the old man that what became of him and how's your affair in the next world the old man replied all his deeds were brought, brought in front of him and the, Allah then said all your deeds are good but my servant I liked your one deed very much it was very small in your eyes but in reality it wasn't therefore because of it I forgave you the deed was that you dipped the nib of your pen into ink as you started writing on the paper a fly flew onto the page and started sucking the ink off the page when the fly finished sucking the ink off the page the writer carried on writing so the fly can quench its thirst with the ink Allah said all your deeds are good but I like the fly's case the most therefore I forgave you the writer showed mercy to the fly so in return Allah showed mercy to the writer I went to a friend called Muhammad Sharif and inquired about the reason as to why would the fly sit onto the ink and I was informed by him that we put jiggery into the ink a family came to see me told me that a story that a member of another family want to marry their daughter but demanding that they would like a marriage function to take place but it's not in our means to do so and asked me to make a dua for them we're lucky that Allah's punishment doesn't arrive on us all at once in Bani Israel there was one form of punishment where the milk was taken out from the cow in the milking process and the milk turned into blood also there was another punishment where the food contaminated with locusts and frogs along with contamination of lice the prayers of our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam are with us as he supplicated o oh allah don't descend your punishment to my people all at once the quran narrates i forgive a lot of your sins without even you knowing we should always bear in mind and focus on allah's mercy before seeking his forgiveness sad and broken people come to see me on a daily basis i'm always receiving the sad stories of people when one occasion a comedian came to visit me and i gave him a vazifa which suited his needs i told him you should give me a funny and happy story as you're a comedian but you're also giving me a sad story which i regularly receive whenever a person comes to visit me with their sad life stories i always give them a vazifa which suits their needs and in loneliness i say to allah that oh allah that i'm empty with nothing to grant them so i'm sending these broken souls to you for you to fulfill their needs i always supplicate one prayer with faithfulness that oh allah don't get hold of me because of my sins or shortcomings and don't descend the demons of punishment upon me who have no mercy in their hearts <clears throat> i hope i don't fall prey to the love of this world in which i will enjoy the worldly life but in return i shall ultimately destroy my hereafter the beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked for forgiveness 70 times a day our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the last holy prophet in this universe he never emotionally or in loneliness ever committed any sins even with his eyes <clears throat> but regardless he daily asked for forgiveness 70 times a day an expertise of the narration of the hadith says he once became a victim of the distractions and worldly desires he sought help by visiting so many places but was all in vain with some luck he came across a pious man the pious man told him to go to a town called khatib and there he will come across a holy man and tell him of your affair and he will solve the matter So the rider set up on his journey and once he arrived at his destination he explained his problems to him the pious man kept his head down and listened to his affair silently when the rider finished his explaining then the holy man raised his head and said inshallah and put his head back down to the prior position the rider proclaimed that when he said inshallah then i felt something inside me was breaking and i got the feeling as though i've been released from some sort of enclosure 
If any sort of pride enters a human heart, example a new phone, clothing or even a high ranking position, then he should immediately seek forgiveness. As I mentioned the supplication before, whenever I made dua to Allah, that please open up this dua and grant me the result of it. I eventually seen the result of the dua and I, granted, I was granted fame, protection from illnesses, protection from magic and jinns, abundance in livelihood and was saved from the pangs of poverty. <clears throat> Basically I found success in the six subjects which I mentioned. At times Allah is displeased with one and he grants them wealth to that person in abundance. I've stated in my lectures many of times that Allah will never take our financial status but will deprive you from prostration to him. Occasionally Allah grants you wealth but at the same time you will lose it all in the form of debt to someone or in other hand someone else will gobble up your money or loot it from you. His attention and focus wasn't towards his creator prior to him losing his wealth. But once the wealth was lost, he automatically turned to his creator. Punishment descended from Allah are not the same or, or, or alike. Sometimes a person suffer, suffers from starvation due to his sins. Several times Allah grants all the blessings to his servant but puts him in isolation. And isolation is a very big form of punishment. Many of times Allah tests his servants in such as granting him wealth and taking him back of him, blessing him with children and taking them away. A relation between the servant and his Lord is very unique. Allah is very merciful. In an instant he forgives his servant, but the relation between mankind is very dangerous. So many people come to me who are possessed by jinns and their home and there are some who don't even believe in the existence of jinns. Even if they do, then they say that the jinns don't interfere in our worldly lives. <clears throat> when humans are affected by the jinns and their lives, peace and tranquility is taken away. I met a gentleman who told me that he has sought repentance and in his past life he used to he used torture methods, e.g. drilling holes into the human body. He said blood would squirt out of the victim's body but at the time he felt no remorse. He also had in his possession a very sharp blade and would cut the victim. The victim would scream in pain but again he felt no remorse or guilt. Several mothers-in-law as well as daughters-in-law also have no compassion or mercy in their hearts. I've received numerous letters along with visitors from people with issues which I'll briefly explain. For example, in one such case there was an issue between a brother and a sister whereas the sister was complaining in regards to her brother who doesn't gaze at her in a respectful manner as a brother should and instead looks at her in an inappropriate manner. I asked my youngest son to pray on a night and told him to say, oh Allah, I'm a child and free from any sin. Oh Allah, please accept my duas. I lastly asked my child to pray on my behalf and ask Allah, oh Allah, grant my father a death on his religion. Oh Allah, please don't let him suffer any shortcomings in the religion. Example, sin, sinful desire, illness, or left dishonored or held accountable for any of the shortcomings of them. Upon completion of the Holy Kaaba, Ibrahim salam made a dua, O oh Allah, save my generation from the worshipping of idols. Muhammad sallam is the head of all prophets and the crown. The finished prophecy on the, is on the head of Muhammad sallam. I once arrived at the temple of Pir Atoro. The Pir seated me in his VIP section. He, prost he prostrated to me. He joined his hands and sat facing me. What he displayed and did broke me from the inside. I then raised my hands and supplicated, O oh Allah, how fortunate are we with your mercy that our foreheads were made just for your prostration and not for prostration to snakes, people, trees, cows, humans or idols. It annoys me to an extent when people come to thank me after their problem is solved. Whereas I'm just a human and Allah is the problem solver. Sometimes a poor person's curse can embroil us in sin. Sheikh Abdullah 
last once entered into the village of non-Muslims. The Shaykh indulged in a sin in the village. Allah snatched away his faith and entered his heart into disbelief. The stick he used to deliver his religious sermons on his pulpit was later used in the herd of swines. I once went along to see a famous person in the area of Lahore defense. He took me to the drawing room and told me every time a visitor would participate in a meal at his home, the dishes would later break themselves into pieces and fires would break out in several places in the house. The house was tormented by some hidden forces. Believe me, the society is very upset. I was once telling a person when medical stores and solicitors are on the rise, then you can say the society is in turmoil. When we, can't, when we can't find peace and tranquility in our lives, then we find excuses to commit suicide. Even after suicide, there is no peace or tranquility. I have cases of black magic and jinnat as well. Men dominating a woman or vice versa. Unseen cases of people being affected by curses. I've often said in my lectures that prayers and curses often follow people in their lives and take a toll on their offspring. <clears throat> can peace or tranquility ever enter our lives? This is the one question neither you or myself can answer. But to bring peace and tranquility we can pray. We should do good deeds and religious sacrifices. Charity is a big deed. There's a narration that a charity can close the doors to illnesses. <laughs> in another narration it says, charity can turn away any form of calamity heading your way. Curses always follow a person or their offspring. I don't have the knowledge as to whether myself, my father, grandfather or great-grandfather have in their time committed a sin or even given a hard time to anyone in their lives and their curses are, for, are still following me. I came across a person from Multan and he told me that when his father migrated from India to Pakistan, his father was very wealthy at, the, at that time, but personally himself he was poor. I asked the person randomly that your father was very rich, was his earnings lawful? The man replied, my father was familiar with the judiciary system and I don't know anything about it. Since the passing away of my father, there has been infighting between us, brothers and sisters, and are pursuing the matters in court. I don't think my father's earnings were lawful, so I told the man an instant that Imam Muhammad was a pupil of Imam Abu Hanifa. <coughs> a person questioned Imam Muhammad that you've written so many books and spread so much knowledge that many camels can be filled with your books and you have not wrote any book on your own mysticism. Imam replied with an astonish astonishing answer, I've written a book called Khitab al -Biyo. The man asked that this book is in regards to dealings. So the man told him, all of a man's mysticism is in, in, is in his affairs and dealings. So I told him to go and search the people who have fallen victim to your father. If you find it difficult in searching the victims and start giving charity. The man replied, I have nothing to my name. So I told the man that if you have one chapati to eat, then you must give half to charity. If not, then a quarter. If you, fill, if you filed any proceedings against your siblings, then put an end to them. The man replied, I don't proceed with cases. If I don't proceed with the cases, then I will be disgraced. So I told the man that you will find honor in only this. I often tell people in my lectures that I've never seen my, I've never seen any giver lose. Neither have I seen a loser give. <clears throat> and another piece of advice I always give is that when a person forcefully eats from someone's pocket, then that person will never succeed. But when one takes from the treasures of Allah, then he can never lose. I've just remembered another incident at a village called Hanu. Kalkaja in Multan, where there are a large number of Hindus, Hindu priests. One gentleman took me to his home that no one can sleep in. He's this dwelling because the sleeper is awakened because of his bed being overturned. 
and if the sleep attempts to resist with strength then his foot is left twisted we've now stopped resting here and only use scents and lights and light candles uh, light candles there i told the man that my gut instinct tells me that someone has been murdered here the man replied that nothing of such has taken place so i talked to myself and said maybe i'm wrong because i don't have the knowledge of the unseen i told the man to supplicate a wazifa along with the rude sharif and your problems will be solved and if any, any murder has taken place then the murderer will appear in your dream after some days passed the man told me my grandfather lived in his house prior to the independence of pakistan and he worked for a hindu the man rep- the man said that i had a dream where a hindu had disappeared and said i'm a hindu and i was murdered by your grandfather i was a generous hindu but when your grandfather strangled me i uttered oh allah so allah forgave me in return the concept of the hadith narration is that the wicked fears the pious i always tell everyone not to even wrong a non-muslim charity saves a person from calamities and destructions my daughter was only two i put petrol in my car and gave the remainder change away to the employee at the petrol station or charity at the time my daughter was out of the car she then ran towards me suddenly there was my driver reverse in the car and my daughter fell under the car i quickly got hold of her hand and pulled her towards myself to save her i then realized that the small charity i gave after fueling was a savior to my daughter's accident I took my family for a day out to Shalimar Shalimar Lahore in Shalimar there are very deep lakes that come with facilities to do ablution for prayers as i was about to participate in my ablution i suddenly heard my wife shout that our daughter has fallen into the lake my son jumped into the lake straight after her to save her My son rescued her and we were both safe and well. I pondered over this incident and reached a conclusion. Soon after the event, a man came to visit me. After gifting me sweets, he then said, Just before you taking your family to the Shalama event, I came to you very distressed and in return you gifted me a wazifa to lead which solved all my problems. And in return, I gave you a lot of my heartly prayers. I then told the man that the supplication of the wazifa didn't just solve your problems but mine also charity is not by just giving away money removing an obstacle from someone's path removing removing a person's difficulty or a burden or be a companion or a or, or a or be a companion or a support in someone's generation is also a form of charity if any calamity is heading our way from generations before then charity can save us <clears throat> do you recall when i said if any person recites allah samad on a fistful out of a kilo of grain for most people i gave the instruction that keep doing this procedure for 80 days there's a lot of reward for this charity one gentleman told me that he had fallen victim to the wrongful use of the mobile phone I forgot all my daily duties and became indulged in the misuse of the mobile phone. The recitation of Allah Subhanahu on the grains opened my eyes to the sinful act. I'm noticing the younger generation slowly deteriorating the wrongful use of the internet and are always falling victim to menless, my mental illnesses, nervous breakdowns, memory loss and weakened nerves. An employee from the mental hospital recently came to visit me. I asked him to tell me of his affairs. He told me there is no rooms available for our patients and the medication is on a low due to the high demand. I asked him the reason behind for the demand to be so high. He replied it's because of the misuse of the internet. I went to a doctor's mental asylum. I noticed a quite large number of the younger generation were present. I asked him the reason behind this. He replied that the reason is a lot of misuse of the net. 
The misuse of the internet is also a form of punishment and protection from this sinful act is so is to give charity for it, his physical or mental well-being. The charity for the mind is to pray on a regular basis, read the rosary and become piety. The physical charity is to give in Allah's way. Sultan Bashir al-Din is our atomic scientist and whilst writing the book titled Sunnate Enabvi and Science, Volume 2, I met him and he told me that the eyes that have seen the words of Quran release miraculous rays don't give charity to anyone but find suitable people who are worthy or entitled to it. Not all beggars are worthy or suitable for charity. Islam has condemned professional miseries. Start by first of all involving your own relatives into the charity. I'll briefly explain a small occurrence. A gentleman came to see me and told me that his house is filled with difficulties. I'm seeing lust, oppressiveness and insanity in the eyes of my sons. And there's no modesty left in the eyes of my daughters. So I informed the man to perform two actions. To give charity and to pray for his children. <clears throat> the best of charities is to donate to relatives. Allah also likes this act. The caste maimon quite often give me invitations for dinner and I always accept and attend. After the meal I give them vazifas. One maimon came along to me and said, I've given charity throughout my life, but from the day I started giving charity to my relatives, the doors of power, divine, mercy, wealth, security, good health have been opened up to me and my problems miraculously by the day started getting resolved. I then realized prior to this I was sidetracked from the Quranic way of life and teachings. The Quranic teachings are so firstly your relatives for charity. Whoever was affected by black, black whoever was affected by black magic and jinns, I told them to start by donating charity to their relatives and inquire about their financial position. Mostly relatives don't complain to another about their financial position and claim that they've, they're financially stable. But make an attempt to inquire or recognize their financial position and if needs be, then help them in a different manner or through a different procedure. A gentleman told me that he helps relatives through giving them groceries but I informed him to give him a little money instead of groceries as you are not aware of his daily needs. Nevertheless, the relatives could assume that giving them money is not ideal or appropriate and could take the offer to heart, or they might attempt to find flaws in your kindness and make you feel small or bad. Still, don't be disheartened and carry on with the charity. Go and search for the relatives who have been afflicted by difficult times. Interest loans, crisis, Financial, insta financial instability and life's failures and give them a helping hand. Always remember, strengthening the bond with relatives with kindness will result in Allah saving you from a horrible death. Allah says, O oh my servant, you be kind to your kinship and I shall save you from a horrible end. I shall accept all your prayers and shall shower blessings in your life. Whoever gives charity along with aid to his relatives and is good in manners towards them, then he will be rewarded in double. If you think that your wealth is earned unlawfully, then think of ways and methods to purify your wealth 100%. I'll tell you a solution if your wealth is earned unlawfully. If you know of a person whose wealth is earned lawfully, then you take off him alone and give back the same amount to him from your unlawful wealth and give a certain amount of charity from the lawful wealth which you've taken off him. Another gentleman came to visit me and told me that he works in a bank and is totally against any type of unlawful earnings but he still has so many dilemmas. I told him this can't be possible. If you don't accept any form of bribe or refrain from corruption and don't behave in a misappropriate manner then no dilemmas can arise but the man insisted that he still has issues. 
And I replied, this can't be possible. And if you say that you are working honestly, then you must be using your working hours in other inappropriate activities. <clears throat> I told him a story that a pious godly man was once travelling. A very angry man passed by him. So the pious man asked him the reason behind his anger. The angry man replied, if my employer doesn't increase my salary, then I'm simply going to leave my job. Since the holy man was very godly, he gave him a kind advice and said to the man to tell your boss that you would like to work for a certain amount of months without pay. The angry man replied, what are you talking about? I'm already financially insecure and you're telling me to work without pay. But the holy man insisted and repeated, if you do as I say, then your financial position will better itself. The man eventually came to an agreement and was ready to do as the holy man said. The man went to see his employer and told him the full scenario, just, as, just exactly as the holy man told him. The boss utterly surprised at the man's request and asked why the sudden change. The man replied, there is no reason or explanation. The employee struggled for another month but stayed steadfast on the instructions of the pious man. Then a moment arrived when Allah opened the doors of mercy to the employee. Sometimes later he met and asked the holy man, On what grounds did you advise me not to take any salary of the boss? The holy man replied, Some, some time ago in your past you unlawfully took an amount of money from your employer. So in return Allah removed all your blessings. When you compensated your salary for months, that made Allah happy, so he reopened his doors of mercy on you. There are subservient people who get praise in return, and on the other hand, there's people who get cursed for their service. A gentleman came along to see me and told me, since I've been attending Tasbihana, I've gained, I've gained simplicity, and I told my wife that I don't desire for anything but a house in defence. For the son to be married off and the car for the home use. I wondered to myself that how would how would his desires have been prior to him coming to Tasbihana? Another incident where as a man was passing by and a random man asked him to come and eat. The man offering the food placed about thirty to forty chapatis in front of the man. The traveller took all the chapatis and returned two out of the lot with the cheek and said to the man, What do you take me for? He ate all the chapatis. The server asked, So where are you heading? The man replied, I've heard there's a herbal doctor not far out from the village and I've come to I've come to inquire and purchase some medication for my loss of appetite as I don't feel hungry. The server replied, Don't even think of returning back to my house on the way back. My father used to tell me that in the early days, the students were subservient to their masters, but now it's a very rare case, and you should be subservient to your masters. There was, there was a professor in our village, and I told him, Sir, I would like to offer my service to you. And he took a close look at my hands and said, Your hands are very soft and not of the working type, so how will you offer your service to me? I used to visit the master's home and fill up water barrels. On one occasion, their jamadar toilet cleaner was on leave and unavailable to offer his service. So I willingly offered to clean the toilets and even volunteered to clean the street's gutters. I arrived and explained my day's duties and I had been cleaning for the professor. My father was overjoyed. My mother used to give me spending money and I never wasted it on unnecessary things. My professor would ask me regularly if I wanted to eat, but I'd always refuse. On one occasion, a friend of mine called Munir, who we called Munir, I told me that I would also like to come along with you and offer my service. At the same time, whispered in my ear that if the professor offers food on this occasion, then don't refuse. We set out to the professor and shortly after offering our service, the master asked if we would like any food. And I replied, yes sir, Manira would like to eat. There was a dough of flour ready to cook. Manira forcibly sat me down alongside him and told me to stay put until he has finished his meal. 
The chapati started to arrive and Marila started to eat in a speedily manner. The chapati soon finished, so the master ordered more. I stayed put with in embarrassment with my head lowered. Marila ate so many chapatis that the flour finished. The master later offered rice pudding. The master asked if I would like some of it. I told him I'm okay. Whereas Manira finished off the whole bowl. I carried with my duty and service to the master. But from that day up until today, he never offered or asked me if I'd like to eat. Nevertheless, the master was very generous. He once told the story of his generosity and said that once a visitor arrived at my house, there were some biscuits available but no milk for the tea, neither any money to purchase any milk. My father was very upset as to how will we acquire the milk for the tea. A short time later, the tea was presented. Once the visitors left my father, my father asked my mother as to how was the milk produced. She replied, I used my breast milk to produce the tea. This story left me shaken. You all should do charitable deeds, which leave one shaken. I often pray, Allah, don't hold me accountable of my shortcomings, or descend a form of punishment or a talent in the disguise of a human, a jinn or a devil, and who've no remorse or mercy in their hearts. If any type of punishment has descended upon you, then giving charity will shake off the punishment from yourselves. Go in search for orphaned, needy or poor and donate charity to them and remember when you found one in need then don't look into them neither which caste nor cult they belong to there are those who are brothers in faith and those who are brothers in humanity brothers in faith are muslims on the other hand Brothers in humanity can belong to any faith. A relative of my wife has become old but still doesn't believe in God. He once tried to convince me of his way of thought, but in return, I was very saddened by his way of thinking and logic. The doing of Allah was as such that something descended on their home and when the word Rahman, Allah's name was recited. But when not recited, the situation became worse. When giving charity, don't let others know. Keep the matter between you and Allah. Istighfar, repentance, financial charity, or relieving any person of their personal difficulty with acts such as these, you'll gain a lot of prayers. As I've mentioned previously, of the story of my children almost drowned in the lake and were, and were saved at the same time through the mercy. The mercy of Allah due to the reason of me giving a wazifa to a person that eased his difficulties. Basically my children were saved from disaster due to the wazifa I gave to a person whose difficulties were eased. A lot of people visit the shrine and resting place of my parents at Ahmadpur east to Kwai amulets for the erase for the for to erase their difficulties and problems. And people tell me of the miracles and benefits from the amulets. You all should strive and invest in a charitable cause that would benefit yourselves even when you've passed away. A gentleman once told me that he only uses goods that are of a designer label, example foot, foot, footwear from a certain brand, clothing, brush, etc. So I asked him, I presume you spend a lot on these goods and I advised him that you should take a small amount and donate it to a charitable, charitable cause, to which he replied that you are aware that the cost of living is very high these days. Basically the gentleman swiftly changed the record. To start off with, he was flaunting his lavish lifestyle spending, but when it came to charity and giving, he suddenly changed his tune and record. 
remember when it comes to ourselves then we are very very big hearted and generous but when it comes to giving to a charitable cause we then become tight fisted and small hearted when we overdo the spending on ourselves then this becomes this comes in the forms of calamities difficulties illnesses and other forms of disastrous spending methods in other words the money goes to waste unwillingly if anyone gives in the way of allah then their financial status increases and goes to their favor the doors of mercy swing open for them and gain and they gain a position of respect we are very weak one little calamity will leave us shaken a man once wrote that shah abdul qadir tilbe who translated the holy quran the poor man once came to him with a coin and said sheikh take this money the sheikh replied you you are poor so keep this coin for yourself even though the sheikh's intentions were pure and good in return the poor man still took his refusal and advice to her due to this small small event the heavenly blessings were halted from being showered upon the sheikh when the sheikh eventually realized it was due to the poor man's feelings being hurt on his advice he then quickly went in search of the poor man he found him and asked for the coin the poor man eventually gave the coin to the sheikh when suspicion enters the heart of a human in regards to his spiritual guide that in in an instant the spiritual links are automatically broken if anyone gets affected by an in, in, in a curable illness then he should purchase the same amount of rice according to his body weight and distribute it in rivers where fish flow get a kilo of rice then get a child to get a fish full from it because the child's hands are small and clean from sin read allah samad from each grain then taken from the child's fist then mix the fish full into the remainder kilo of grain and throw into a fresh river that contains fish in completing this procedure your difficulties and problems will be solved and mountains of miseries will crumble a man recently told me that i've heard from your lectures that we should give salam to strangers and pass up pass by this has become a normality and i'm now giving salam to even random people whenever i face a calamity or a difficulty in life i then frequently greet salam to people and in return the greetings and peace back to me and in return they whenever i face a calamity or difficulty in life i then frequently greet salam to people and in return they greetings and peace back to me we can't even recognize anyone's real status because in our eyes the person returning the greetings might be a small person character wise but in reality a very big person in the eyes of allah certain people demand to allah to make it happen and allah in return does so these so called small deeds can diminish calamities and difficulties don't ever think of a deed to be small if a small thorn can put a halt to a vehicle to the value of 5 million rupees to 2 million just like that these small deeds can save us from huge calamities and difficulties our small deeds in the form of salam dua charity and finding relatives who are in need and helping them is some of very effective methods of erasing our calamities and if we want sustenance in our lives and our offspring's lives then we should carry on in search of our relatives and help them with charity my mother's aunt aunt's daughter who's now become old and has been poorly for a few days i called her today to check up on her well-being she was complaining and told me you've not been in touch on a regular basis not like your mother and you should have at least sent me some medication upon hearing the complaints i came to realize that at least i'm in touch with my relatives 
and all this is the blessing of blessings of Tasbihana. So basically, the advice I pass on to you all is also, also advice I act upon, and I also gain benefits from it. People with their strong willpower travel to Tasbihana from far away distances. One day, an old man came to see me and told me that he had travelled from a mountainous area past Kilgit through snowy terrains and it took me three days' journey to visit you. The old man took out some walnuts from an old sack and gifted them to, gifted them to me. I don't usually accept gifts, but on this occasion I accepted and put the gift close to my chest. I thank you all for attending this Tasbihana because you all, because of you all, we have the opportunity to discuss religious matters, lives of our prophets, along with lifestyles of pious and unholy men. My heartedly prayers go out to the ones who attend Tasbihana. And the advice I give out to everyone benefits the people of Allah. Sending Islam to each other is a form of prayer. The explanation to Islam is may Allah keep you protected, keep you safe from sorrow, difficulties, calamities and worries. It's narrated in scriptures that one should send Salam upon entering one's home. And if there's no inhabitants in it, because jinn, because jinns and angels also be present in the homes. When and when ending the salah with salam to your right, always bear in mind the angels and jinns on that side. And same for the salam to the left. If any angel returns your greetings, then your salam will be accepted. <coughs> And if, I, if any pious jinn or a pious man returns your greetings, then your problems of life will be resolved. You should try to give a small charity if you can't afford a big one. Either give a financial charity, save someone's life, show someone the right path on the religion, or add a supplication on religious social network pages, or follow-ups on their mobile phones. One gentleman told me that he decided to daily open up notification apps on, of religious wazaif and hadith on the mobile phones of a certain number of people. If any person leaves any of the follow-ups and notifications on their mobile phones, then their difficulty will be eased and problem solved. The man said, if anyone leaves a prayer set up by myself on their phone, then I will also benefit them reap the reward. <clears throat> With small charities as such, Allah then saves us from his calamities and punishment. There's one prayer, O Allah, don't make my condition as such where my enemies laugh at me and I become a laughing stock for the rest of the world. O Allah, don't make me, a de don't make me dependent on anyone and don't make me come across a merciful un, uh, don't and don't make me come across an un, unmerciful person in the face of a boss wife husband house owner or home tenant oh Allah I seek refuge in all these calamities the process of being saved from these calamities are two one is prayer and the second is financial charity God forbid if your earnings are unlawful, then worry in how to make it lawful and figure out a method. And from the lawful wealth, spend in the name of Allah and donate charity to relatives. In return, Allah will grant mercy, respect, blessings and comfort in this world. Salam is a small act, but a very big deed. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam narrated Spread the deed, Salam. So we shall, from today onwards, carry on praying and donate to charity. The first priority of charity must be relatives. Keep an eye on their general well-being. Help a poor relative's daughter in marriage. 
If there's any damage to their homes, then help them in the repair. Attempt to do good deeds. May Allah accept our attendance at to Tasbihana. These are methods as to doing good deeds which you receive in Tasbihana. Spread these pearls of Tasbihana to the people so they may benefit from it. يا أول الأولين ويا آخر الأخرين يا ذا القوة المتين يا راحم المساكين يا أرحم الراحمين يا كرم الأكرمين يا جود الأجودين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصلي على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات يا الله ايمان كامل دے دے اخلاص كامل دے دے اور برکت كامل دے دے اور عافیت كامل دے دے دل کی دنیا بدل دے مولا جذبوں کی دنیا بدل دے ایمان کی کیفیتیں بڑھا دے اخلاص زندگی میں عطا فرما موت کی سختیوں سے بچا ایمان والی موت دے دے اخلاص والی زندگی دے دے برکت والی زندگی دے دے ہدایت عام کر دے دلوں کو منور کر دے یا اللہ ہمارے دلوں کو اپنی محبت کے لیے قبول فرما ہمارے دلوں کو اپنی محبت کے لیے اپنی معرفت کے لیے قبول فرما ہمارے مسائل کو ہر فرما ہماری مشکلیں دور فرما ہماری ناکامیاں ختم فرما عافیت اور برکت کو منور فرما اور زیادہ عطا فرما اے اللہ پوری امت کے کام بنا دے ساری انسانیت کے کام بنا دے اور سب کی مشکلیں حل فرما دے اور سب کی پریشانیاں دور فرما دے بن مانگے عطا فرما بن مانگے عطا فرما بن مانگے عطا فرما جو مانگا عطا فرما جو نہیں مانگا تھا فرما بیماروں کو شفا دے دے قرض داروں کے قرضے دور کر دے تنگ دستوں کی تنگ دستیاں دور کر دے مشکلوں میں الجھوں کی مشکلیں ختم فرما قیدیوں کو خلاصی عطا فرما اور ان کے مسائل حل فرما یا اللہ جو کسی گناہ کی مصیبت میں مبتلا ہے اس کی مدد فرما اس کی مدد فرما جو کسی برائی کی مصیبت میں مبتلا ہے اس کی مدد فرما اللہ نفس کی شرارت سے تو ہی بچا سکتا خود ہی کہتا ہے اللہ ما راہم ربی اگر میرا رحم ہوگا تو میں بچا سکتا ہوں کہیں ایسا نہ ہو مولا اسی میں چلتے چلتے موت آ جائے اور حتیٰ ضرورتم المقابر بن جائیں اے سخی آقا ہمارے دلوں کی حفاظت فرما ہمارے جذبوں کی حفاظت فرما ہمارے صبح و شام کی حفاظت فرما ہمارے اندر باہر کی تو ہی حفاظت فرما اپنی فرشتوں کی حفاظت ہم سے نہ ہٹا ہم سے نہ ہٹا ہم سے نہ ہٹا ہمارے حال پہ فضل کر کرم کر اور رحم فرما عزت اور آبرو کے رستے عطا فرما عافیت اور برکت کی راہیں عطا فرما اور ذلت کے ہر رستے سے بچا علت کے ہر رستے سے بچا اور قلت کی مولا وقت نہ دکھا نہ ایمان کی قلت دے نہ مال کی قلت دیں نہ رزق کی قلت دیں نہ اخلاق کی قلت دیں اور نہ اخلاص کی قلت دیں یقین آقا دے مولا یقین دے یقین دے جتنی آہیں لگ ان سب کی آہیں قبول فرما جتنی دعائیں مولا سب کی دعائیں قبول فرما اور جتنے پردیسی مسافر آئے بیٹھے ہیں ان کے اٹھے ہوئے ہاتھوں کو خالی نہ بھیج رنگا رنگ کر دے مالا مال کر دے ان کی فریادوں میں مولا تو توجہ فرما ان کی دعاوں میں مولا تو توجہ فرما ان کو دنیا میں بھی دے دے آخرت میں بھی دے دے ان کے رزق میں برکت دے ان کے مالوں میں برکت دے ان کی اولادوں میں برکت دے اور ان کو دنیا آخرت کی خیریں اور سخاوتیں عطا فرما دنیا آخرت کی برکتیں عطا فرما اہل بیت سے محبت دے صحابہ کا ادب دے اولیاء سے محبت اور ادب عطا اللہ ہماری زبان کو گستاخ نہ بنا مولا اپنی رحمت کو متوجہ فرما جو بیمار ہیں شفا دے دے قرض داروں کے قرضے دور کر دے محتاجوں کی محتاجیاں دور کر دے مشکلات اور مسائل حل فرما اور پریشانیاں دور فرما 
اے اللہ ہمارے اٹھے ہوئے ہاتھوں کو بہت قبول فرما بہت قبول فرما دور پرے سے پردیشی مسافر آئے ہیں ان کی آہوں کو قبول ان کی دعاوں کو قبول ان کی راہوں کو قبول ان کے راستوں کو قبول فرما اور اٹھے ہوئے ان کے قدم ہدایت کے قدم بنا دے برکت کے قدم بنا دے آفیت کے قدم بنا دے اے اللہ جتنے آمین کہہ رہے اور پوری دنیا میں پوری دنیا میں آمین کہہ رہے اور بعد میں کہیں گے سب کی آمین کو قبول ہو سب کی آمین کو قبول ہو سب کی آمین کو قبول ہو ہمیں دنیا میں بھی برکت دے اور آخرت میں بھی برکت دے اور ہمیں دنیا میں بھی آفیت دے اور آخرت میں بھی آفیت آفیت کا نظام بنا دے آفیت کے دروازے کھول دے برکت کے دروازے کھول دے ذلت علت اور قلت سے بچا جو مانگا عطا فرما جو نہیں مانگا عطا فرما جن کی اولاد نہیں مولا دے دے انہیں جن کے بیٹے نہیں دے دے مولا اور جن کی اولاد دی ان کو نیکی عطا فرما اور جو اللہ جو رشتوں کے معاملے میں پریشان ہیں ان کے رشتوں کا حل کر دے جن کے گھر اجڑے ہوئے ہیں آباد کر دے اور جن کے گھر اجڑے ہوئے ہیں مولا آباد کر دے گھروں کے اختلاف سے بچا گھروں کا چین اور سکون عطا ہو معافی دے دے اور رحم دے دے برے وقت سے بچا کسی مجبوری سے بچا کسی مقہوری سے بچا کسی معذوری سے بچا وصل اللہ علی نبی الکریم وعلى آله وصحبه وأهل بيته وإطرته أجمعين آمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وعبقري حساب